Hey y'all, welcome to Hummy's World and I am going to be showing you today how to make these rays of light. I'm really into uh, digital Bible journaling and I did this layout and then realized that this might be a great um, tutorial for course two. I think this is going to be number 101. If you want to learn more about Bible journaling, um, search on my YouTube channel. I also have a video about that, so I won't go into detail here, or you can ask me and I can uh, link you up with it. Um, so I'm going to make this uh, layer visible and invisible so you can see these light rays. Now there's lots of ways to make light rays, but the, this is the fastest, quickest, you know, easiest way, and um, uh, so that's what I'm going to show you. And so I'm going to turn this off just for the purposes of the tutorial so that we can uh, recreate it. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to fill, first hit D on your keyboard so that your foreground and background color over here are uh, black and white. Then go to filter, render, um, and clouds. And now you have these ugly looking clouds that sometimes we wonder what in the world are we going to do with these ugly things. There's actually lots of things you can do with them. And this is one of those things. Uh, next I'm going to go to um, the create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to choose threshold. And now you want to make it uh, you know, you can move this around a little bit. It might change your rays a little bit, uh, but uh, right here in the middle is perfectly fine too. You don't want to get down here where you don't have very many. Uh, and then uh, click on OK. Now, in the full version of uh, Photoshop, I did make this layout in the full version, but I try to do all of my tutorials in Photoshop Elements so that everybody can do them. Um, but in the full version of Photoshop, in one of these drop-down menus, you can apply the threshold directly to this layer. Just want to mention that in case you're in the full version so that you could skip this next step. <coughs> but um, here in Photoshop Elements, now that I've made this adjustment layer, I need to permanently apply it to uh, this cloud layer. So I'm just going to right click and choose merge down. Now if you right click over here in the wrong place sometimes or on the mask uh, you're going to get different options. So if you right click in the wrong place try again. So I'm going to right click and choose merge down and now it looks like that. It looks pretty ugly. I'm going to go to filter, uh, blur, and I'm going to choose radial blur and um, it actually comes up, let me, this, it's going to come up looking like this, I believe. And so you're going actually but more like that. <laughs> um, you're going to want to choose zoom and you're going to want to make that radial, radial blur much more, you know, near the top of the number scale and then you're going to want to choose your light source. Your light source is going to be different with um, you know whatever you are creating and for me um, I wanted my light source to come from this upper left hand corner so if you have uh, clouds and a sky that you want some rays to come down from you can um, you know, choose maybe, you know, consider about where, uh, you know, those clouds might be up in here. You can move this wherever you want. I wanted mine up here in the corner. So I'm going to click OK. And then just like that, I have these fun rays. But then you have to apply a blending mode. And so um, I think I either had overlay, which it might be what I had. Let's go look what I had. 
I had soft light so you can change that to soft light you can change it to whatever blending mode works actually I found some of these other blending modes um, you know like this one is pretty cool vivid light uh, where's the one that I really liked there was another one I liked um, this lighter color Ooh, those didn't work. I thought there was another one. Color burn. Color burn uh, looks pretty cool. So um, there's really not another one I thought there was. So I'm going to go back. I'm just putting, pushing the, uh, after you choose one of these, um, this is one of the tips at Hummies World. I just push the up and the down arrow keys to scroll through these. So I have mine on uh, soft light and um, if you want, if it's too intense, you can also lower the opacity, but it's not too intense for me. So that's how I did it for this layout. But we're going to do the same technique again um, so I can do a little bit more advanced. Um, this is a photo I took uh, last weekend or the weekend before laying at a park or at, at actually somebody's private property that they open up uh, for people at this time of year and I was laying on a picnic basket on my back and um, uh, my husband was had his head on my stomach and I was uh, looking up and behind me and I was like wow I love that view that is so amazing and uh, so I grabbed my camera and I turned around in a cockeyed position and took a pet picture. I just love how in photography you can um, just get into uh, just see things from a different view by just changing your position. It looks uh, all so much different. Anyway, we're going to put some rays of lights through these trees and you can see the sun here. So the sun is coming this way again um, in your light in your photo it might be um, from a different direction uh, like I said especially if you've got a photo with some clouds you may want it to come down from a particular cloud or if the Sun is setting a lot of times if you if you take photos right into the sunset or the sunrise you, you might be in this area uh, but we are going to come from this way again. So same techniques, uh, create a new layer and filter, render, clouds. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer for threshold and I'm going to just click that away. Right click, merge down and the next step, filter, um, blur, and radio blur and it kept my settings from the last time and I'm just going to use those again for because the the uh, of like I just set, discussed the light sources from the same uh, place well let's go ahead and just to make things different bring that light source down just a little bit on the edge and just like that we have a bunch of arrays now we could cycle through um, that looks kind of like if you're in some video game <laughs> grungy ooh, multiply grungy dark like in some evil video game uh, so but you can just scroll through oh look at what that one did <laughs> but when I get to the lighter that's pretty cool uh, and ooh, screen is really cool it's not really realistic but it's cool <laughs> but we get down in here to the overlay and the soft light soft light seems to work best and and you have magically a nice uh, effect vivid light I'm just scrolling through the rest of them <coughs> so here we are with soft light but we want to take this a step further and I'm actually going to move up to this screen just so I can see it and work with it better. Um, when the light shines through often uh, the things that are closer to you the light is shining behind them and not in front of them um, as it shines through things and so we're going to create a layer mask by just clicking on the layer mask um, 
your foreground and background colors should still be black and white. So I'm going to grab a brush and um, I have tutorials on the brushes, but here in Photoshop Elements are your brush tools and I just chose a, a soft brush and changed the size. So with black as your foreground color, because we always remember white reveals and black conceals and so our layer mask is white and uh, so right now it's revealing all of the rays and we want to conceal or keep some of those rays from showing wherever those trees are are closer to us and so I've got black and I've clicked on my mask I see a uh, box, a blue box around it, so I know I'm working on the mask and not on the rays themselves. And I'm just going to draw and get rid of the rays on the tree. Now I kind of goofed and went over a little bit too much. So you can exchange your black for your white in the foreground color and hit the places where you need those rays to come back in where you goof and if you goof again you can go back back and forth so I did that tree and I'm going to uh, lower my brush size and lowered it a little too much I do not like these new Photoshop elements with the tool options on the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing for this uh, tree. Another way, instead of doing brushes for this, I could get my polygonal lasso tool and simply draw from here down here to the tree. Just clicking in each spots and quickly put a selection around that tree. And then I'm going to, let me see, yep, hold down the Alt key and hit the Backspace key and it fills that right in. It actually filled it in better than uh, this. I did this tree here. I actually like some of the rays showing a little bit on this tree, but let's see what it looks like if we do this method here. I like the way it filled it in a lot better. Alt Backspace. And I didn't do very well. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to select this area again, and I'm going to do Control Backspace, which is going to put in the background color to fill in that area where I didn't do so well. And I'm having trouble with this down in here. I'm going to grab the Control D to deselect, make sure I'm still on my mask layer, and um, what am I on? I didn't get my brush. See, this is what happens when you don't use Photoshop Elements too much. Um, I'm actually going to... <sighs> Where is it? Brush setting? Oh, here, lower the opacity some more to this brush. And, whoops. And my brush is too big. Now it's too little. And I'm going to, I need to be painting in white. And I want to kind of uh, uh, control Z, undo that. Oh, see what happens? I could do this so fast. I'm going to lower the opacity some more. And I want this to just. That's just not. <laughs> Let's lower that opacity some more. Why is this not working very well? I want to bring that back in a little bit down here at the bottom so it's more gradual. I'm going to go back to black and there we go. Now it's working better. 
so that it the light is more uh, gradual in here on the grass. Okay, I took a long time with that. But um, there you can see the rays of lights are coming in behind those two trees. So if you don't want the rays of light to apply to certain uh, areas, you can uh, mask them out. And then I'm going to go switch back to soft light, and you can see that works very well. Or, um, you know, if I liked that screen look, I could actually just lower the opacity to it. And that kind of looks really cool. I like that. Kind of gives it more of a cloudy feature. So before and after that way, too. However you want to do it. And multiply. Ooh. Before and after. I don't know why I like that. But, because um, <laughs> it's not realistic. Maybe for a sunset it is. Uh, but, soft light is the best. Like that. Um, it's not the best. Whatever works for your layout is the best. So, um, that is my quick uh, to tutorial and uh, I look forward to seeing how you can apply this on a, a layout. You don't have to do a Bible journaling layout. You can do it on whatever layout you want. Bye.